The main goal is to make the world better than you found it. And so if the benefit you can make is more than the harm you can make, then you're a net positive society. Hey, my name is Matthew um, and I am the owner of a tiny house. So my tiny house is a tiny house on wheels. Um, it's 7.2 metres long and 2.4 metres wide. It's got a loft, so my bedroom's all upstairs um, and it's got a, a bathroom and then a, a kitchen and a living area. So for me, one of the big things about sustainability is, is minimalism. One of the great things that you can do is just live with less. And a tiny house is really good at embodying that. It's just a, a, a much smaller a surface area using less materials. There's far less embodied carbon than there is in a, in a usual house. If you've got a composting toilet, you're using a whole lot less water and um, not producing wastewater, um, so that's more sustainable as well. Yeah, really, for me, it comes down to uh, living with less, um, being more minimal, um, not having a whole lot of stuff that, that you don't need. I've been involved in the Everhomes uh, workshops for the last three years. I've been um, on-site volunteering eff effectively as a builder running one of the, um, the crews. I'm not actually a builder, um, but the skills that I've picked up um, on the tiny house have meant that I'm able to, to do that and, and give back to the tiny house community. Alright, everyone, block your hands. <laughs> to the road. <laughs> First thing I want to do, I'm just going to talk about the day today. So we've got Marie and Matt, um, and they're going to do electrical inside the house. We're going to divide into three and then we'll rotate through these. My name is Everett. I'm a builder. I build eco houses, so really beautiful, healthy houses. I live in a tiny house and I've, for the last five years we've been, I've been helping and now leading tiny house workshops. We're building a tiny house over eight days. I think people were really surprised at how much it's covered. It's almost like an introductory to carpentry, as well as introductory to sort of building design, all in one. When you talk about tiny houses and how can that help sustainability, in a weird way, that could be sometimes the most direct route. When I started building, I used to build really big, fancy houses. But what you sort of see is, no matter what your circumstances, you sort of get used to them. So the, the term is called the hedonic treadmill. So what you really want to do with, with anything you're adding to your life, no matter what it is, you should be asking yourself, how does this add to the four pillars that add to your life? So meaning, you know, connection, security, and health. If I were to get a much bigger house, I would have less security. I would have less time to have meaning. And I'd probably spend more time inside, so it doesn't help with health. But you do not have to follow you know, the norms of society of you need to buy and spend. And so in a way, we, we use the least of anyone, but in a way, we're also the most happy. So we, we do talk about materials a lot. So the, the environmental consequence of each material and as well as the health effects of each material as we talk about different types of insulation. The wood is all locally grown. It's a lot better than importing steel and manufacturing. And in this weird way, if you're trying to build a healthy house and you're trying to build something that really is prioritizing their needs more than what they think, more than ego, you make an incredibly environmental build. If you build a healthy house, and you build to your needs, that is an environmental house. I've loved my tiny house journey, it's fantastic. Um, I'd also say that if you want to do a self-build, which a lot of tiny house people do, um, you're going to learn a lot. Um, it's going to be a great experience and sometimes it's going to be a hard experience and you need to be um, prepared for both of those things. When it's three in the morning and you, you've got a tarpaulin over your house and it's pouring with rain and you're sort of howling at the moon, 
you know, th those are the moments where you really need that grit to, to get through it. So um, yeah, it's been one of the one of the best things that I've, I've ever done. Um, the friends that I made through the process, so that, yeah, I've really appreciated it. I have thought quite a bit about, you know, do you want to have children because of the burden on the planet? And you know, I think this is part of the way, right? So I guess a lot of the things I try to do is just, can I be enough? And, and the hope is when I do have kids that they can be the same. I, I really do think this is one more step towards a better future. It seems to me to be the most effective and long-term solution to climate change. We are really at the beginning of, of something that will become much bigger and much faster. We probably don't conceive of all the reasons why we should be doing it.